Hello, this is Sandra Osterberis bringing you a few words of Bible from the heart of biblical Israel. This week's Torah portion is Shmini. And in this Torah portion, it is one of several Torah portions in the book of Leviticus that is full of rules and regulations. Uh, the beginning of the, of the Torah portion um, talks more about uh, what actually happened with the tabernacle. Uh, I would like to focus on the second half, which is dedicated to some of the beginning of the kosher rules. Uh, and this actually begins uh, in chapter 11, where we say God speaks to Moses. These are the creatures that you may eat from among all the land animals. And then it goes on. Uh, and these are the creatures that you may not eat. And we have this uh, separated into um, mammals, into, you know, or different kind of animals that, that, uh, that walk uh, on the earth, those that crawl, those that are more like insects, reptiles, uh, birds, etc. And we have a list and categories that are, are given to us as to what we are allowed to eat and what we are not allowed to eat. And as many of you know, Jews even today keep these rules very strictly uh, and many rules that derive from these rules. It's not just a question of what animals or what creatures we, we eat and what we don't eat, but what we eat together. There's also rules having to do with the separation of meat and milk. There's rules having to do with how animals need to be slaughtered. Those rules, of course, are not here, but this is the beginning of the whole kosher system. Now, at the end of this section, at the end of chapter 11, uh, we have verses 45 through 46 uh, gives us this uh, through 47 excuse me gives us a hint of what the meaning of all of this is now I would like to just um, say that many people have found meaning in some of the specific laws uh, finding that some of the animals that we are forbidden to eat are indeed not so healthy for us to eat and I'm sure that there's a lot of significance to those discoveries but I think um, way before anybody knew uh, any of those discoveries or any of the, some of the scientific bases for some of these, these rules were very carefully honored and respected. And the reason they were honored and respected because it was what God commanded. And God himself tells us or gives us a hint as to the significance that he sees to these rules. Verse 45, for I, the Lord, am he who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall be holy, for I am holy. These are the instructions concerning animals, birds, all living creatures that move in water, and all creatures that swarm on earth, for distinguishing between the unclean and the clean, between the living things that may be eaten and the living things that may not be eaten. So if I look at these three verses, I basically find three themes. One is a reminder of the Exodus. I am the God who took you out of Egypt for what purpose? To be for you a God. We have here setting the stage, and of course these rules were given very shortly after the Exodus from Egypt to the generation who themselves left Egypt, but the point of this is to say, I brought you out of Egypt so that you would be my people, and I would be for you a God. So these rules are part of that very special relationship that God has established with the nation of Israel. They are particular to the nation of Israel. They are not universal. Secondly, we find God is saying, and you will be holy for I am holy. And this is actually part of that special relationship. But it's something that I think all of humanity can learn from, okay? God says, I am holy. You can be holy because I am holy, or if I say it in a different way, you can aspire to holiness because you want to aspire to godliness. And I think this is something that can be a goal for every single human being. We want to trust God, we want to believe in God, and we want to be like God. Of course, we're not God in the sense is we're not divine, we don't have these superpowers, whatever. Why do we want to be like God? How do we want to be like God? In this characteristic of holiness, we want to 
um, imitate God's attributes. We want to learn from God. And when God gives us instruction, we want to follow his instruction because in this way we can become holy. We can become close to God. We want to uh, imitate his attributes. And lastly, and this perhaps is most significant in a practical way when we talk about kosher rules in general, to distinguish between the impure and the pure, between that which we eat and that which we don't eat. The idea of distinction. Uh, and we know, for example, um, when we talk about the Sabbath, we distinguish between uh, the Sabbath day and the days that are not Sabbath. When we talk about creation, there's a distinction between light and dark. Drawing lines and making distinctions is something that we see in various parts of the Bible. And here, I believe that the very fact of making the distinction is the essence of God's instruction. God is giving us do's and don'ts. These are the things you do, and these are the things you don't. Human beings have free will. Uh, and if we are, become slaves of our free will, we are as far from free as possible because we can do whatever we want. And therefore, we have no guidelines. We just do it. We do what, what comes to us. We do what, what we feel like doing. And then we become a slave of our inclinations. What God here is saying is, no, 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 no. You have a free will. You can choose but I'm going to set for you the guidelines by which you choose. This is what you choose, and this is what you reject. And it's the very act of distinction, which is actually the, 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 the foundation for choosing. You have to first be able to distinguish between that is what is right and that was what is wrong, what is good, what is bad, what is pure and is impure, what is permitted and what is forbidden. Once you understand that distinction, then you have the power to choose and hopefully choose the right way. Now, part of this distinction, I would say, and, and what became a very important function of the kosher rules is keeping the nation of Israel distinct and separate from the other nations. And this is particularly important um, at, at a time of pagan worship, uh, when the Jewish people come into the land of Israel and they, they come into a land that is full of pagan worship. God instructs us over and over again. We see this particularly in the book of Deuteronomy. Don't learn from their ways. Don't follow their gods. And from the beginning, God understands that to make it easier for us to, to um, stand up to these uh, negative influences that we will see in our surroundings, we have to have a completely different way of life. And there's nothing like kosher to have created a different way of life. And even today, I know for myself, as I travel around the world and I meet with people who are not Jewish, who do not know our rules, um, and I have wonderful, wonderful friends, and it doesn't set up a barrier between me and people in order to get to know one another, but it does remind me, as I keep my kosher rules, it does remind me all the time that I am different, that I have different laws, I have different regulations, I have a different destiny, and it is very much something that enables us as the Jewish people to keep ourselves distinct and separate. Have a wonderful weekend. Shabbat Shalom. I hope you enjoyed that video and we'd like to be sure you're getting all of our video content. So just click on the subscribe button below as well as on the notification bell and that way you will have easy access to all our material. We look forward to staying in touch with you. God bless you and have a wonderful day.